in the high stakes world of pediatric emergencies, seconds matter. Every decision can make the difference between life and death. The ABCDE approach provides a systematic framework for healthcare providers to quickly assess and stabilize critically ill children. It is a universal language ensuring a coordinated and effective response to any emergency. By adhering to this structured approach, medical professionals can prioritize interventions and optimize outcomes for their youngest and most vulnerable patients. A patent airway is paramount for survival. Children with their unique anatomy present distinct challenges. Their airways are narrower and more prone to obstruction. Assessment involves looking, listening and feeling for signs of obstruction. Is the child speaking? Are there abnormal sounds like strider or wheezing? The jaw thrust maneuver is a vital technique for opening a child's airway. It involves gently displacing the jaw forward without extending the neck. This technique is crucial in trauma cases as neck manipulation can worsen spinal injuries. Remember that a child's trachea is softer and more flexible than an adult's, making it susceptible to compression and kinking. Once airway patency is established, the focus shifts to breathing. Assessing respiratory effort is critical. Look for chest movements, respiratory rate, and signs of distress like nasal flaring, grunting, or retractions. Early signs of respiratory distress in children can be subtle. These include tachypnea, tachycardia, and agitation. As the condition worsens, cyanosis may develop. Auscultation of the chest with a stethoscope helps identify any abnormal breath sounds like wheezes or crackles. Pulse, oximetry, which measures oxygen saturation in the blood, provides crucial information about respiratory function. Remember that children desaturate much faster than adults due to their lower oxygen reserves. Circulatory compromise can be life-threatening. Early signs of shock in children include tachycardia, delayed capillary refill time, and cool extremities. As shock progresses, hypotension develops. Assessment of circulation involves evaluating heart rate, blood pressure, capillary refill time, and skin color. Palpating peripheral pulses provides information about the strength of the circulation. Fluid resuscitation with intravenous fluids is the cornerstone of treatment for shock. Medications like inotropes may be necessary to support cardiac function. Remember that a child's heart rate is much faster than an adult's. Tachycardia is often the first sign of shock in children. All right, so disability refers to the patient's neurological status. Rapid assessment is crucial to identify and treat potential life-threatening conditions. The AVPU scale, alert, voice, pain, unresponsive, provides a quick assessment of consciousness level. The Glasgow Coma Scale, or GCS, offers a more detailed evaluation of neurological function, assessing eye opening, verbal response, and motor response. Pupillary response, including size, equality, and reaction to light, provides valuable information about the brain status. Hypoglycemia, or low blood sugar, can mimic neurological deterioration. A bedside blood glucose check is essential in any child with altered mental status. Seizures and raised intracranial pressure or ICP require prompt recognition and management. And remember, a child's neurological status can deteriorate rapidly. Early recognition and intervention are critical.
E. Exposure and environment. Exposure involves removing clothing to allow for a thorough head-to-toe examination. This step is crucial for identifying any hidden injuries or signs of abuse. However, it is equally important to prevent hypothermia, especially in young children who lose heat rapidly. A warm environment is essential. Use warmers, blankets and warmed intravenous fluids to maintain the child's body temperature. Remember that hypothermia can worsen outcomes. Always maintain the child's dignity and privacy while performing the examination. Explain the procedure to the child and parents in an age-appropriate manner. Pediatric considerations. Children are not just small adults. Their physiology and responses to illness and injury differ significantly. Their airways are smaller, their tongues proportionally larger, and their breathing is primarily diaphragmatic. They have higher metabolic rates, requiring more oxygen and faster fluid resuscitation. Their bones are more pliable, making them prone to green stick fractures. Their skin is thinner, leading to greater heat loss. These anatomical and physiological differences necessitate specific considerations in every step of the ABCDE approach. Conclusion. The ABCDE approach provides a structured and systematic framework for managing pediatric emergencies. It ensures that life-threatening conditions are identified and addressed promptly, improving outcomes for these vulnerable patients. By understanding the principles of the ABCDE approach and the unique considerations for children, healthcare providers can orchestrate a symphony of care, ensuring that every child in crisis receives the best possible chance of survival. Scenario. Imagine a frantic mother rushing into the emergency room carrying her limp two-year-old son. The boy is pale, not responding, and struggling to breathe. He had been playing in the garden and may have ingested something. How would the ABCDE approach guide your actions? A. Airway. You immediately assess the child's airway. His head is in a neutral position, but his breathing is labored with audible wheezing. You perform a jaw thrust maneuver to open his airway and ensure patency. B. Breathing. His respiratory rate is rapid and his chest shows significant retractions. You administer high flow oxygen via a non-rebreather mask to improve his oxygen saturation. C. Circulation. His heart rate is rapid, his capillary refill time is delayed, and his extremities are cool to the touch. You establish intravenous access and begin rapid fluid resuscitation with normal saline. D. Disability. He is unresponsive to voice or touch. His pupils are equal and reactive to light. You check his blood glucose level, which is within the normal range. E. Exposure. You remove his clothing to examine for any signs of trauma, rashes or other clues. You keep him warm with blankets and a radiant warmer. This scenario highlights how the ABCDE approach provides a structured and efficient method for managing a pediatric emergency. By systematically addressing each element, you can quickly stabilize the child and provide life-saving interventions. Remember, in pediatric emergencies, every second counts, and the ABCDE approach can make all the difference.